Abraham and Nimrod is a story that binds them together, an epic struggle between good and evil. They both come from the generation after the flood, when the world was created anew. As per the Bible, Nimrod, who built the Tower of Babel, fought with Abraham over the question of which God is the one. There is a gap in the Bible about the story of the quarrel that was filled by external books, and it is the story of the fiery furnace into which Abraham was thrown due to his faith. To understand the quarrel between Abraham and Nimrod, we have to go back to the moment when humanity came out of the ark. Let's begin. At the end of Noah's story, when the flood ended and the ark was parked on Mount Ararat, humanity began to establish new families. When they had to go down from Mount Ararat to a suitable place to build a new life, those generations knew the secret of the power of the land of Israel. This was passed down in tradition from Adam who chose to make a sacrifice specifically in Jerusalem, to Noah, who also made a sacrifice there. They begin to walk towards the land of Israel, from the Ararat Mountains in the east. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. Genesis 11 verse 2 On the way, Nimrod urges them to build the tower in the city at the place they found on the way. Nimrod is a descendant of Ham, named in Genesis chapter 10, which deals with Noah's sons after the flood, from whom nations were formed. Despite being the son of Cush, Nimrod does not appear in the list of Cush's sons in verse 7, but the Bible dedicates a verse to him. Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, that is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The first centers of his kingdom were Babylon, Uruk, Akkad and Kalna, in Shinar. Genesis 10 verses 8 to 10 According to the verses, it seems that Nimrod is described as a positive character, by saying he was being proactive, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. Heroism, he was a mighty hunter. Creating a kingdom and building cities. His actions are done for the sake of heaven, a mighty hunter before the Lord. By describing this complex in such detail, the Bible negates Nimrod rather than making him a positive character. Nimrod's name, as well as the expressions used about him, are negative, implying rebellion against God. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves, otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Genesis 11 verse 4 The first sin of renewed humanity is the construction of the Tower of Babel. After the flood, staying outside the Holy Land was the sin of the generation. They intended to make Nimrod, their God and to place him at the top of the tower so that he would watch over the entire world. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. Genesis 11 verse 5 As a means of protecting themselves from natural disasters, they set up an idol. There is one family who leaves and goes to the land of Israel after settling, the Turah family. Turah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot's son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. Genesis 11 verse 31 Nimrod and Abraham's stories are close, perhaps to illustrate good versus evil and the only one God. After the verses about Nimrod and his generation that complete Noah's history, the Bible opens with Abraham. Nimrod and his generation declared war on God so that heaven and earth could no longer be connected. Despite being persecuted by his generation, Abraham remained faithful to God. His actions will strengthen the connection between heaven and earth. 
Following the sin of the first man and the sin of the generation before the flood, the generation after the flood committed the third sin of humanity. As a result of these three sins, Abraham was selected to fix them. It is not clear in the verses why Abraham was specifically chosen, but we can conclude it from the comparison between Nimrod and his generation to Abraham. The verses describe Nimrod as a hero, but Abraham is not, his significance rests precisely on the omission of his talents and virtues, which are all tools for fulfilling God's plan. In Hebrew, Abram means father of all, and God gave him the name Abraham. No longer will you be called Abram, your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Genesis 17 verse 5 In this way, Abraham achieved what Nimrod desired. The meeting between Nimrod and Abraham took place during a faith struggle, in which God is real. It all happened while Abraham was living in Tura's house, and the story of the breaking of the statues took place there. There are two external sources for the story of the smashing of the statues, an Aramaic text between the 4th and 6th centuries and an Arabic text from the 7th century that fills the gap in the Bible. The story starts when Tura falls ill and asks his sons to go sell statues for him. He asked his father who created the heavens and the earth, and he was told that they were the statues and the idols, who created him and all mankind. To examine the statues, Abraham asked his mother to prepare food as an offering to the idols, which she did. He took the food and sat alone in front of the statues. When they didn't respond and touched the food for a while, Abraham took a hammer, destroyed the small statues, and gave the hammer to the big statue. When Tura heard voices chanting and breaking, he ran to the room and saw Abraham coming out. He became very angry and decided to kill Abraham. However, Abraham replied that he had no bad intentions, he explained that he brought food to the gods, but the smaller idols ate before the big one, and the big idol started attacking them. Tura became more enraged and told Abraham, You are lying because these gods are made of stone and wood. Therefore, Abraham proved to his father that if there was no spirit of life in them, they could not create the world and everything in it. In response, he asked his father to stop worshipping idols. After the event with his father, Abraham began to convince the people of the city that the statues of the gods had no power and that they should believe in the God of Abraham. The news of Abraham's following reached Nimrod, who pondered what to do with him. Then, when Nimrod was at the feast, Abraham came in and broke all the idols. Nimrod, claiming to be a god, told Abraham that he created heaven and earth, and Abraham replied, Can you change the course of the sun so that it rises in the east and sets in the west? If you can do it, and I believe in you, but if you cannot, Know that the same God who gave you the power to break the idols will also give me the power to kill you. As a result, Nimrod sent Abram to prison as a slave, ordering the guards to not feed him bread and water. During Abraham's imprisonment, Nimrod decreed that Abraham's punishment for insulting and breaking the idols would be burning. As well, Nimrod and his men decided to burn Abraham's father Terah. As Terah arrived, he accused his son Haran, Abraham's brother, who had also become a believer in Abraham's God. This was to escape from Nimrod, so Abraham and Haran were sentenced to be burned together as a result. As Nimrod ordered Abraham to be taken out of the prison, the warden said to him, You should know that he has been locked up for a year without eating or drinking anything and is surely dead. Then Nimrod told him, Go and check on him, and we'll burn him. They were surprised when he returned safely and asked who brought him food. Then Abraham answered and said, The God of heaven who fed all mankind is the one who fed me. 
All those who threw Abraham into the furnace of fire were burned alive. With the assistance of Satan's, Nimrod found a way to throw Abraham and his brother Haran into the fiery furnace. After that, they both throw into the furnace together. The first to be thrown into the furnace of fire was Haran, and because of his heart and his faith, he quickly burned. After Abraham was thrown into the furnace, all the people witnessed Abraham being in the furnace for three days and nights and did not burn, but Nimrod didn't believe them and started mocking them. Seeing it for himself, he ordered Abraham's release from the furnace. After realizing that Abraham couldn't get out of the furnace because they were all being burned, Nimrod called Abraham and told him, Go outside, you are the faithful and blessed, servant of the true God of heaven. When Abraham came out before Nimrod and all the people who were standing there bowed before him, as did Nimrod as well. Abraham told them that he was nothing, and they should not bow to him but believe in the God of truth in heaven. As a result, Nimrod gave Abraham many gifts, and his elite slaves, including Eliezer the slave of Abraham, some say that he is Nimrod's son. The story of Abraham represents God's miracle as part of the world's correction after the first man sinned and was expelled from heaven. In generating the flood, the human race was destroyed. As a result, Noah restarts the repair process. Then Nimrod and the Tower of Babel were built for rebellion against God after the flood. Next, Abraham, God's leader, starts the correction process. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. You can share with us what you know by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. Thank you so much and see you next time.